want to change the way people think about games, not just not just gamers, but you know parents and teachers and 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 everybody. We think that games are um, a significant part of of uh, of our culture, our worldwide culture. It's not just you know a pastime for kids anymore. Games are mainstream entertainment more so every single day. But we're at this kind of tipping point right now where, you know, I always hate to say this because I love comic books, but we could go the way of the comic book. We could become marginalized and, you know, just become entertainment for kids now and forevermore. Uh, or we can take our place with movies and, and uh, literature and television and, you know, more, you know, I can't believe I just described television as a respected medium. But anyway. Um, we, we can take our place as, as you know real significant adult entertainment. And I think in order for us to do that, we have to stop looking to the past. We have to stop looking to you know our old Dungeons and Dragons campaigns and uh, stop looking to, to previous games for inspiration and start thinking about what we can do that no other medium can do. The other thing that's really interesting to me is um, the Academics are starting to pay attention to us, you know. I mean, I, I'm doing a lot of work with uh, people from MIT and Northwestern and USC and UCAL Irvine and, I mean, DigiPen and Full Sail. There are schools that are now teaching game studies. I mean, who would have thought? And that sounds like, that sounds horrible and, oh my God, people are going to start talking about semiotics or something at some point, you know. But it's, it's really kind of cool because those guys are like the cultural gatekeepers. They're the ones who decide this is important, this is not. They're the ones who are going to be going to, the, to Joe Lieberman in Congress and saying, no, 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 this is not just about violence. This is not just about you know, using sex to sell games. This is, there's something else going on here. This is a part of our culture. It's important. Back off. I don't buy the argument that there are console gamers and PC gamers. I don't buy it for one second. Uh, I, it, here's the, the deep, dark secret. You know, I, I played one PC game from start to finish last year. I played so many more hours of console games last year than I did PC games, it's not even funny. You know? Everybody in the studio has a rockin' PC on his, his or her desk. And we all have console games at home. Okay? Um, the, the audiences are, are coming together. The, the kinds of games we're making are directly in line with what PC gamers want, what console gamers want, what gamers want. In most games, uh, what happens is, uh, you know, a player says, "Wasn't it cool when uh, when that monster burst through the window and you and, and and you got out your your you know your BFG and you killed it?" Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it was cool when I did that too. In our games, what happens is, you know, someone will say, wasn't it cool when that monster burst through that window and I got out my BFG and, and I killed it? And someone will say, monster? What monster? I, I never saw a monster. I'll have to go back and try that again a different way and see if I can get the monster to burst through the window. You know, our games are all about your experience being unique. The most validating thing that's happened in the last couple of years was the release of Grand Theft Auto 3. You know, that game came out uh, on the PS2 and it's coming to every other platform in the world now, obviously, um, and and completely validated everything we were trying to do. Uh, it validated not just in general terms that you know players want you know a deep simulation that they can interact with however they want, but it validated uh, you know the idea that that console gamers are as into this as PC gamers always have been. So, uh, you know, we think we're in the right place at the right time with the right idea. And our, our whole manifesto is built around the idea of, um, you know, creating great immersive simulation games. That's, we don't think of ourselves as shooters or action games or role-playing games or, um, you know, anything except immersive simulation games. What we try to do is we try to set up a cool, a cool overall story. You know, in Deus Ex, you're J.C. Denton, Deus Ex 1. You're J.C. Denton, you've got a brother Paul, you work for Yanatko, you go on a bunch of missions. Oh my God, they've turned against me, you know? That kind of storytelling stuff we own, That's, that belongs to us. But uh, the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay, how do you respond to Yanatko turning against you? How do you respond to the fact that the 
the bad guys might not be the bad guys. That's all up to you. You know, there are two guys standing there. Do you kill them? Do you sneak past them? Do you talk to them? That's all up to you. Um, and we think that player-controlled, free-form sort of gameplay is is really powerful. It's what games do that no other medium does. Uh, and it's kind of the foundation of everything we try to do in the studio. When you play a game, it shouldn't be about how clever the designer was. It shouldn't be about, oh my god, what a cool puzzle. Wasn't that neat the way the designer created something and I solved it? It should be about you in a game world, interacting with that game world the way you want, making a plan, executing it, and you get to be creative. Players get to be creative. The thing that gets everybody in the studio excited is when, uh, when players collaborate with us in the telling of a story. The world is ready for it. Um, the, the key is making the gameplay accessible, which we now know we can do. Uh, and so, you know, a year from now, we rule the world. That's our, that's our master plan, you know?